If you purchase a domain with GoDaddy, and then after purchasing your domain, you started an email with them with Microsoft 365, and you're like, you know what? I don't want to use Microsoft 365 anymore. I want to use Google. I want my domain name to be with Google Workspace and the same email address. In this video, I'm going to show you how to switch that over without losing your email history or even events in your calendar. So let's get started. Before starting anything, we're going to have to change the permission on your Microsoft Exchange underneath your organization. So underneath the description of this video, you're going to see the first link, you'll say number one link. You're going to click on that and we're going to get started as far as changing the permission for your organization. After clicking that link, you're gonna log in and on the left-hand side, you're gonna see a similar menu as you see here. Click on roles, then admin roles, wait for it to load. Once it loads, you're gonna find organization management. Click on organization management. Next, you're gonna click on permissions, then find application impersonation as you see here and click on that. Once you're done, make sure to click save. Now for this next step, if you have never set up a Google Workspace ever, I want you to continue here. If you already have a Google Workspace, I want you to skip to four minutes and 55 seconds. Now let's continue. Now, if you haven't started a Google Workspace account, we're gonna do so here and we're gonna create one. If you have, you can skip this part. I want you to click on this link and this link will be underneath my description. Once you click on it, you're gonna click on Get Started. After Get Started, you're gonna put in your business information, such as your business name, how many employees do you have, is it just you, a couple people, and then the region that you're in. Next, you're gonna put in your contact information, your first name, your last name, and the work email address that you would like to have with your domain. So for this example, I put trucks at shifting10.com. For this, I just clicked on no set up my domain because we are going to need to set up our domain. Then Google's gonna ask you, does your business have a domain? Because you purchased your domain already with GoDaddy, you will click, yes, I have one I can use. Type in the domain name you would like to use. So for this example, I just typed in shifting10.com. And then for a secondary email, just put in an email that you have access to, just in case you were to, you know, something were to happen to this email. I personally would use a regular Gmail account that you have. Something that, you know, let's say for example, if your domain expires or anything like that, you have easy access to the secondary email address. Now, how will you sign in? Use the same email that you're using with Microsoft 365. So if you have trucks at shifting10.com, use trucks at shifting10.com here as well so that there's no confusion with having two different email addresses. And then type in the password that you would like to use. Next, click on I am not a robot and then agree and continue. Now it's time for the fun stuff, the payment plan for us to pay. With this one here, you do get a 14 day free trial I will put a link underneath this video here so that you're able to see how you can switch from $14.40 a month to something that's less. I believe it's about six or seven dollars a month. So click on the link under my description to see how to do that. But for now, as you see, we have no options other than to choose $14.40 a month. So we're gonna click on try for free. You can either do the annual or the monthly. And from there, you're gonna type in your billing information. To continue, you're going to click on I understand, and then you're going to see a screen that looks like this here. Don't do the activate or the create, don't do that yet. Instead, I want you to click on the top left hand side menu option underneath account, click domains, then click manage domains. From there, you're going to see verify domain. I want you to click on that button right there. And let's get started by verifying your domain by signing in to GoDaddy and connecting your domain. After the verification, you're going to see a screen like this. Do not click on activate Gmail. Do not click on that. Don't do it. Now, please hold while I show people who already have a Google Workspace 
what to do next. Then I'm gonna show you how to merge and transfer everything over to your Google Workspace. Now let's say you already have a Google Workspace. You already have a couple domains that you've been using for your email, but you just wanna transfer over your Microsoft 365 email that you set up with GoDaddy over to your Google Workspace. I want you to click on this link here and you will find this link underneath my description as well. Underneath your menu option, you're gonna see account, domains, you're gonna click on manage domains and you should see a screen that looks like this. From there, you're gonna click on add a domain. Type in the name of your domain. For this example, I just typed in mistechnical.com. You're gonna use it as a secondary domain. You do have the option to choose the other one if you would prefer that one, you can but I do recommend secondary domain. You're then gonna click on add domain and start verification. From then, you're going to sign in to verify, which will allow you to sign into your GoDaddy account. Once you sign in, you're gonna see a screen like this. Give it some time to load. Once completed, you will see this. Don't click on anything just yet. Don't click on activate Gmail. Do not click on activate Gmail, okay? Let's go to the next step. The next step is adding a user or users. In this example, I'm just showing you how to add a user, switching one user from Microsoft 365 to a user on Google Workspace. So underneath the domain that you just added, you're gonna click on add users. Again, your screen should look like this. Activate Gmail should not be activated. You're just gonna click on add users. Once you click on add users, you're gonna enter in the information. And again, that email should match the email that you have for Microsoft 365. And the reason for this is if someone has your email already saved, you don't wanna to have to give them a whole new email. So make sure that it matches your Microsoft 365 email. And when I mean Microsoft 365, I mean your Outlook, your Outlook email. Click on add new user and then make sure to copy that temporary password. Do not lose that temporary password. Next, we're going to sign into your Gmail account, the one that we just set up with your temporary password. Please note, you cannot send or receive emails from here just yet. We haven't activated your Gmail, remember? We haven't clicked that button just yet. So what we're gonna do is at least sign into the account. The easiest way to do this is to go to gmail.com. When you go to gmail.com, if you already have a Gmail that you're already signed into, you may see a screen like this. If not, it's just gonna prompt you to log in. If you do see a screen like this, on the top right-hand side, you're gonna click on your user face right there. It might be a face, it might have an initial. Click on that and you're gonna then click on add another account. From there, this is when you're gonna sign in with the domain and email that you just made and with that temporary password. You are then going to create a new password. Don't forget the password now. Now we're gonna go back to gmail.com and you're gonna click on that email that you just signed into. And then it should look something like this when you sign in. All right, we got that completed. Now it's time to move over your email in your calendar. So this link that you see right here will be up under my description. So you're gonna click on this link and it's gonna direct you to your Google Workspace admin. The screen should look like this, but just in case if you don't see it, on the menu option, you're gonna click on account and then you're gonna click on data migration. From there, you are then going to click on set data migration up. Underneath Migration Source, you're gonna click on Microsoft 365. We're then gonna start off by migrating the email, so click on email, where it says Auto Select Recommended, leave that alone, leave it alone, and then click Authorize. From then, it's gonna ask you to sign in to your Microsoft 365 email. Once you do this, underneath Permissions Requested, click on Accept, then click Start. For the migration start date, pick a time frame. You could pick a year, you could do a custom time frame. And then you have the option to migrate deleted mail, migrate junk mail, or exclude the following folders, which will allow you to exclude which folders you don't want to migrate. For this one, I just clicked on migrate deleted mail. 
And then from there, I'm gonna click on Select Users. All right, so this is where you're able to select the users that you would like to migrate to the new users that you added to your Google Workspace. So we're gonna click on Add User, type in the email from your Microsoft 365 Outlook, and then once you type that in, it's gonna have you select one of the users from your Google Workspace to migrate it to. So for this example, we are clicking on Nicole at mistechnical.com. Click on Start, and you're gonna wait for it to hit 100% for it to show you that it's been completed. Once completed, we're gonna click on More and then Exit Migration, and now we're gonna migrate the calendar. But before we do this, let me show you how everything is transferred over so that you can see that it worked. So this is what my Gmail looks like after the migration. And I'm gonna do some comparison so that you can see that everything was transferred over. So on Outlet, we see underneath my inbox, Nicole Monet test, and that was at Thursday at 6.02 p.m. Hey, you see that right there? Now, let's go to Google, and you're gonna see that it's right there, test at 6.02 p.m. Hmm. It worked. Now let's go to GoDaddy. GoDaddy says that this was sent on Wednesday, October 25th at 5.13 a.m. Underneath Outlook, GoDaddy, bam, right there, 5.13 a.m. All right, now underneath my folders, I'm gonna click on my folder, and then I have something from Add Some Flavor. All right, and I'm gonna go back to Google, and I have my folder and then add some flavor. So everything that I tested has been migrated. Now it's time to migrate our calendar. So we're gonna go back to the data migration. We're gonna click on set data migration up. We're going through the same process, but for this time, we're gonna click on calendar. Now, one error that I noticed, after I clicked on authorize, I couldn't see the start button. And I'm like, why can't I see the start button? The reason why is if you have this issue, zoom out. So I push command minus if you're on a Mac or control minus if you are on a Windows computer or a laptop. And then you're gonna be able to see the start button. From there, you're gonna click on the time frame and then click on select user. And just like before, we're gonna click on add user, type in your Outlook or your Microsoft 365 email and then click on the email you would like to migrate it with. Wait for it to complete and bam, it is complete. Now let's do some testing. Okay, I'm looking at my calendar and everything under my Microsoft 365 is on here. I just did two tests um, and it, as you can see, the two tests is right here. Okay, now we can click that button, the activate Gmail button that I was telling you about. So we are gonna go back to our domains and now we can click on activate Gmail. Once we do that, we're gonna click on set up MX records. You can skip set up MX records. I don't recommend that, do not do that. Click on set up MX records, okay? You're then going to sign back in to your GoDaddy account. Bam, boom, pow, connect. Wait for it to load, wait for it to activate, and bam, your Gmail with your domain name should be working. Now you're seeing me do a test just to make sure it works. So I'm sending an email to myself, making it testing and then test and then send. And then as you can see here, I received it and I'm replying back to that email to make sure that I'm receiving it, and I did. Now, if you have any questions about this video, comment below. I plan on making more videos, some tech videos every week. So if there's something that you're having trouble with, comment below and I will make a video about it. If you have questions, email me at Nicole at mistechnical.com. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, share. Thank you guys for watching.